The most ironic thing that I've seen when I was on my TikTok, for those of you that don't know, I had a TikTok with 36,000 followers. I recently deleted it, not because TikTok is a spy for China, but because I just, you know, had a few people that I know that were stalking me and trolling me there. And then I discovered who they were, but the account had been effectively disabled. And it was a very important thing for me because it was my coaching business that I established is actually helping me get caught up in my regular business. And so I had to keep dealing with these suspensions. And eventually the account got shadow banned for the last six, seven months. You know, the videos went from, you know, a few million views per month to, you know, barely even getting out of the gate. And so it caused me to have to go live streaming all the time and then just accelerated the motive for these types of trolls because they saw that with TikTok, TikTok's extremely sensitive to, you know, hate speech and other things. And so when they could just keep making profiles and fake reporting people, the trolls have a lot of power there. And so that's the problem with that platform is that it's a really amazing platform initially for people like me, because it has a very powerful algorithm for connecting you to your audiences. Also, it, 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 it enabled a very authentic experience for myself, something very, very different than anything I've ever had on social networking. You see, for the first time in my life, people actually listened to me and I made a difference for them. The only place that I've ever really experienced that was when I was coaching at Landmark. But in my own personal life, you know, I've always had to deal with arbitrary negation, that even giving people perfectly sound advice, even as their boyfriend, their best friend, their brother, you know, people arbitrarily negate you. You know, and so it's been a very, very difficult life just from the standpoint of acknowledging the truth of my experience, that a lot of my problems were because of my own inability to differentiate myself. You see, living in a world where people think I'm arrogant or cocky, it's more that, you know, I have to fight to exist, that I'm always in a defensive arrangement because of persistent trolling, negation, sabotage, unceremoniously being dismissed. It's something that I would wish on nobody. And because I had nobody in my life that ever, ever related to anything I would tell them, it's always two sides to a story. And the thing to know about narcissists is they smear people. If you've never experienced uh, relationships with narcissists, it is the most insidious and damaging thing that can ever happen to you in your life. Because these people, for everybody else, masquerade around as normal people that you will not know necessarily. You might even think they're good people. They can have a very, very good reputation or persona, but they're exploitative, they're beguiling, you know, they're, they're chameleons. And they don't necessarily abuse everybody, but they're, you know, very hierarchical. They're very much only interested in themselves social images. And so, you know, they have no problem discarding friends. You know, the thing that they do is as they move up through the ladders, you know, they dis, just dismiss people that they only interpret you in terms of whatever you could provide them. You're either giving them services, you're either giving them attention and affirmation, or what you're doing is you're providing them with some kind of social benefit, you know, like their association with you, for example, makes them feel like they're a better person. And so they judge you. And it's really not even about you. It's about their own inferiority. And so they don't feel comfortable associating with people that aren't, uh, you know, out of a, at a higher level than them. And so if they, you know, have some kind of job breakthrough or they get a new car or they do something they'll just disconnect from people. And so, you know, these people, you know, constituted the vast majority of everybody that I've ever known. And the problem with it is that I grew up with them. And so I did not have any awareness that there were these types of people and they're masterful at beguiling people, particularly if you're unaware of their existence. And so they learn how to undermine you by triggering you. They know how to create confusion. They know how to guilt trip. They know how to, you know, change the goalposts and make you think that you don't recall things. You know, they make deals with you and then they purposely sabotage those 
And then they act like it didn't happen or they act like you're just kind of crazy or what they'll do is they'll purposely get you upset and then they'll go and talk to people that you know as if they're cool, calm and collected because they will be contrived. You see, they'll act offended, they'll act angry, they'll do this to get you upset because it's all a part of a manipulation game. They want to steal something from you, they want to take something from you, or they get sadistic satisfaction out of sabotaging people that are smarter than them. See, why I would be a target is because I'm like a child that's just trying to have a family, that's just trying to find a place to belong, because that's all I've ever had. And I may have had so severe things and I've never had friends that come to my defense or rescue that if things are going bad, my friends, some people that I might have known for years would turn on me in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah, he must have done something really bad. And so you're always going to be judged. You're always going to be only as good as what you recently did and that your character is not something that anybody considers. And so narcissists are masterful at undermining your mental health purposely, getting you involved in projects, getting you involved in relationship things, getting you involved in things, and then undermining you by letting you do things and then sabotaging it and then taking it away or then getting control of it or, you know, acting naive and confused or forgetful so that they get you just talking and talking. And so they get so much grandiose satisfaction out of being a gatekeeper, out of being somebody who's gotten involved in something you're doing just so they can ensure that it doesn't happen. See, they'll get you committed to things. You have to understand that I've been through people where I literally pay half of the LLC, I'm paying for designs, and then they they quit. And then I go here, and then it's the same thing. And so, you know, they come in and they make these promises and see, the thing about it is they're very ignorant because they're so inferiority driven in fear of failure that their comfort zone is the architecture of the world that they control. And so people like me do not really feel like we, we don't want control, but we have something they don't have. We have creativity and objectivity. And oftentimes their deficiencies, their lack of organization, their lack of integrity, because you see, they don't care about a lot of the things they do. They depend upon other people that do care to make up the slack, but oftentimes they have other things going on that you're unaware of, but, you know, they're very phony and fake people, you know, and so what'll happen is you'll see opportunity to come in and fix things, but then they'll start undermining you, undermining your mental health and, you know, beguiling you, you know, they'll start, they'll, then they'll become agreeable again. Oh yeah. They'll get back on the same page. And you'll, they'll keep resetting the same nonsense, you know, where you make some agreement, you're going to do this on Monday, and then Monday comes, they do something else, and then you're like going through two weeks of whatever nonsense with them, like you don't understand why they're flaking, why they're not doing it, why they stop that from happening. And they waste all of your time and energy because it makes them feel important. It makes them feel powerful to knowingly be able to, you know, trip you up. And so that's what they do. And so rather than seeing the big picture, they only care about these emotional highs that they get. The risks of failure are never going to attract them. And so they didn't really want to make the supercharger. That's too big for this person. He's a coward. And so what he does instead is he ruins it for me, that for him, it's all about image anyway. They don't really care about anything except for what people think. Like a narcissist could be somebody like a scam artist. And as long as everybody thinks that they're somebody, that's all they care about. And so, you know, they, you, you think that they really want this business thing. They don't care about that. As long as everybody thinks that they're a good business person, that's enough for them. And so they get a lot of joy out of like tripping you up. And so like they'll feel real grandiose by not doing the work and forcing you to keep coming back. And like, you know, and, and they, they so it's like pulling out and pushing and pulling out is something that makes them feel more important than you. And so they're trying to show you that you can't do it without them. And then they prove it to you by sabotaging. And so when they sabotage you at the end, it's to ruin it. So to make sure you couldn't do it without them. So you know that they are more important than you, but they keep doing it so that they make sure you can't get up. And so they try to really ruin you and they try to push people to like jump off buildings. Like they're 
essentially within the same category as psychopath. They're dangerous people. 